hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'll be breaking down all the confusing by stat stuff attributable risk absolute risk reduction number needed to treat and all those stuff and we're gonna do an example together so let's get started now before you jump to um calculate or anything in a bias test question you really want to find out whether the exposure is something good or bad so if it's a protective exposure that leads to better outcomes decreased incidence of disease decreased uh, mortality then the terms you're going to use or the measures you're going to use would be related to risk reduction so it's going to be absolute risk reduction or relative risk reduction okay and ultimately the number needed to treat Rather, if it's a bad exposure, something like smoking, for example, that increases the incidence of disease or increases mortality, then the measures you're going to use would be attributable risk as an absolute measure, attributable risk percentage as a relative measure, and number needed to harm. Okay? So this is the first thing you need to know. The category of measures of association you're going to use will depend on the type of exposure. So let's apply that here in this example. So here, the exposure is supposed to be a good one, which is a drug here, antihypertensive drug called Valsartan. Okay, so this is supposed to be protective in that it decreases the incidence of cardiovascular death. Okay. So, before you interpret any table, don't just take it for granted that the table would be in a 2x2 two two form. The typical 2x2 two two form is the one shown here, where the exposure here is in the rows, a row, the top row being exposed, bottom row being non-exposed, and the outcome would be in the columns, with the positive column here and the negative column here. Uh, positive outcome, negative outcome, okay? So here we're comparing whether patients who use Valsartan have decreased incidence of cardiovascular death as compared to those who do not use it, okay? This is the study. So make sure that it's in this format, and if it's not, then do it yourself on your uh, scratch paper or whatever. So it has to be in this format, and that would be A, that would be B, that would be C, and that would be D. Okay? So A, that means the outcome in the exposed group. And C is the outcome in the unexposed group. Okay, and here is the total. That's total exposed. That's total unexposed. And here you got total outcome positive total outcome negative so how can we calculate the absolute risk reduction absolute risk reduction is the difference between the incidence of cardiac death in those taking valsartan compared to those who do not take it so how can you actually find out the incidence it's right there in front of you Okay, so it's going to be A over total, those who take Valsartan, those who got cardiovascular death out of all those who take it. So it's A over A plus B. That's the incidence in the exposed group taking Valsartan, which is supposed to be a protective exposure, right? And then you have the outcome in the placebo who are not taking it. So you have c that's cardiovascular death here in the unexposed over c plus d which is the total placebo so out of all those who do not take valsartan how many had cardiovascular death so that's c over c plus d so this is the incidence in the unexposed now if we divide them by each other this is going to be the relative risk but we don't want that. We want the absolute risk difference, 
which is called absolute risk reduction. That's how much less would cardiac deaths be in the exposed versus unexposed. So if you actually calculate the incidence of disease here in Valsartan, 300 divided by 1500, that's going to be the rate in Valsartan, 300 over 1500. which is going to be 0.2. So 0.2 is the incidence of cardiac death in those taking valsartan, which is a protective exposure. Now let's calculate the incidence in the placebo group. That's going to be 400 divided by 1400. Which is going to be 0.28 which is around 0.3. So clearly, you can see that there is a higher incidence in the placebo or unexposed group, which proves that this is a protective exposure and that the measure of association we should be using would be the absolute risk reduction, right? Because the exposure reduces the risk. So in that case, to calculate the difference, we're just going to subtract them from each other. You take the big number and put it first and subtract the small number from it. So it's going to be 0.3 minus 0.2, which is 0.1. This is the absolute risk difference. Now, how can I quantify this in a proportion? Or relative form because if I tell people the difference was 0.1 they may not appreciate the extent of or the the great extent this has been or the uh, they may not be able to appreciate it much unless you you tell them it has reduced the risk by 50% by 60% you see the difference and so that's why we want to convert this absolute value into a relative value called relative risk reduction. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, want to get this number, which is that of the absolute risk reduction, 0.1, and divide it by the control group, the control group, which is 0.3. So you get the absolute risk reduction and divide it by the control. So that's 0.1 over 0.3. That's how much difference in proportion or in percentage between those who took Valsartan and those who didn't. And that's 33.33, uh, .33, which is 33%. So if I tell someone that Valsartan has decreased the incidence of cardiac deaths by 33% compared to those who didn't take it, that would count much. They would appreciate the effect. Unlike if I told them that the difference between the two groups was 0.1, if you told them the absolute. That's why we calculate the relative, right? Now, there's another way you can do that easily, which is to subtract relative risk from 1. So 1 minus relative risk gives you the same value of relative risk reduction. So the relative risk, so relative risk is exactly the same numbers, but we're just going to divide them over each other instead of subtracting them. So if I want to calculate relative risk, it's going to be 0 0.2 over 0 0.3, which is going to be 0 0.66. So a relative risk reduction would be 1 minus 0 0.66 which is the same as 0.33. So there's two ways you can get the relative risk reduction. And I'm sure you all know what relative risk is, and it's usually used for bad exposures, for example, smoking and lung cancer. So it's A over A plus B divided by C over C plus D, okay? So it's going to be 0.2 over 0.3. That was for 
protective exposures. And for that, there is a really nice uh, measure that we can use called the number needed to treat. That is, if I treat 100 patients, uh, for example, with this drug, Valsartan, one, one extra patient would, like, would live instead of die from cardiovascular disease if the outcome here is cardiac death, okay? So that's 100, maybe 50, could be 25. So number needed to treat means how many patients should I treat with this drug in order for one to benefit? Now, the smaller this number, obviously, the bigger the effect, the fact that I need to treat only a few patients to save one, that's, that means it's a really good exposure. So how can you actually calculate? So the number needed to treat here is one over absolute risk reduction. If you go up, absolute risk reduction here is 0.1. So that's one over 0.1, which is 10. That means I only need to treat 10 patients for one of them to benefit. And the benefit here is not dying from cardiovascular disease, which is a huge benefit. And so obviously this gives you an idea of the effect of this exposure or valsartan, right? So that was for protective exposures. We use those measures of association, absolute risk reduction, relative risk reduction, and number needed to treat to estimate the effect on the population. Called These are called estimates of population impact. On the other hand, there is bad exposures that lead to negative outcomes. For example, obesity leading to myocardial infarction. Let's compare that. In this example, exposure here wouldn't be a treatment, wouldn't be a protective factor, rather it would be a risk factor, right? So we've compared here a group of obese patients and the incidence of myocardial infarction among them. So again, this is gonna be A, right? This is gonna be B. C and D. If you would want to calculate relative risk, as usual, it's going to be A over A plus B divided by C over C plus D, right? That would be relative risk. But that's not what we want now. We want something called attributable risk. Attributable risk is very similar in calculation, except that instead of this slash, you're going to put a minus sign or subtraction. This is the absolute difference. The absolute difference in incidence of myocardial infarction or any bad outcome between the exposed and the unexposed. So let's do that here as well. So let's calculate the attributable risk. It's going to be 12 divided by total A plus B, which is 200. That's for the bad outcome. Minus, note here the subtraction sign, C over C plus D, which is 4 divided by total, which is 200. And then a number would come, which is going to be 0 0.06 minus 0 0.02. So obviously there is higher incidence here in the exposed group, which is going to be 0 0.04. 0 0.04 is called the attributable risk. That is the absolute number of how many more in the exposed group than the non-exposed group. Okay, this is the absolute difference in incidence. This is 0.06, this is 0.02, so it's more by 0.04, and that's it. But then how can I quantify that as a percentage? Now, in order to quantify that in percentage form, what you're going to do is you're going to divide this number, which is the attributable risk, by the incidence among exposed, which is by 0.06. And then multiply by 100 to give you a percentage. So 0 0.04 over 0 0.06 times 100 
is 66.6 or 67 percent approximately that means that 67 percent of cases of mi are attributable to obesity because if there was no obesity at all it would have just been 0.02 so if it was equal to the placebo 0.02 minus 0.02 that's zero no difference but because there is a difference how much is that difference that difference is 0.04 out of 0.06 that's a 67 percent more more cases of mi because of obesity so 67 percent of those 12 cases are attributable to obesity and that's if you actually you got four here non-obese and you got 12 obese so that's eight more cases those eight more cases are because of obesity if it weren't for obesity it would have just been four so, so eight over 12 is also 67 percent so it's 67 percent of cases of mi are attributable are because of the fact that this patient is obese imagine the effect of the outcome this way when you word it this way in a relative or in a proportion form than in an absolute form in an absolute form i would just say the difference between both groups was 0.04 but how effective is that how much can i quantify this 0.04 only if you put it in percentage form okay so to calculate the attributable risk percent you're gonna get the attributable risk the absolute difference and divided by the rate in the exposed group which is a over a plus b okay now an alternative way to calculate attributable risk percent just like we did earlier in the relative risk reduction here you're going to do it the same way it's going to be one minus relative risk reduction so that's one minus the good equals the bad and over there when we wanted to calculate relative risk reduction it was one minus the bad equals the good right now to quantify the effect of this exposure we're gonna use we're not gonna use number needed to treat obviously we're gonna use a different measure called number needed to harm that means how many people need to be exposed to this which is in this case obesity before one person dies of mi okay and obviously the less the worse so how are we going to calculate it the same way it's one over attributable risk so usually number needed to treat or number needed to harm would be one over the absolute measure okay so in this case for a bad exposure, the absolute measure was attributable risk. Up there for a, for a protective exposure, the absolute measure was absolute risk reduction, right? So you divide the absolute measure by one, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be one divided by 0.04. So one over 0.04 equals 25. That means 25 people need to be obese in order for one of them or one extra to die of MI. And that's such a small number and that's such a bad thing. Okay, so that's how you quantify the effect, usually by relative measures like attributable risk percentage, number needed to harm, 